in the English Bibles and we are talking about dito po sa King's Translators and actually naumpisahan po natin to last week we already talk about its background at madami na po tayong napag-usapan po dito po mga kabatid when we talk about this name po mga kabatid of men these names uh, of men na ating pag-usapan they are now hardly known to more than a few person ka hindi na ganun ka popular they they used to be so popular and uh, they're well known men in England but of course as as time lapses and expire po mga kapatid ay yun and nabaon na din sa limot yung iba so in the providence of god the fruits of their labors have spread for you, for your information had been spread for distant climes and have laid broad and and deep foundations of the mighty empires ang nagiging work nila po mga kapatid and have afforded to multitudes strength to endure adversity and also grace to resist the temptation of prosperity and only the revelations of that judgment day can disclose how many millions and millions through the instrumentality of their labors mga kapatid have been made wise unto salvation only god can tell at that judgment seat of christ kung ilang millions ang natouch nila na buhay at ang kanilang mga buhay ay nagkaroon ng impact and isa po ako sa mga buhay isa po tayo sa mga buhay na ang kanilang mga ang kanilang instrumentality ay nakaabot sa atin at na bless tayo up to this very moment. And that's that's the thing po mga kapatid. We need to appreciate. We need to remember po mga kapatid. In 2 Peter chapter number in 2 Peter chapter number 1 that me read uh, the Bible says knowing this first that no prophecy I'm reading verse 20 that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation so all of the scripture is not coming from from men okay this is not coming from men but this is the words of god and by no means that this should be misunderstood otherwise okay but they should be understood based on uh, what god says okay not 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 ano po Uh, it should be understood in a plain sense or plain reading other than ano po mga kapatid na uh, malayo sa kanyang sinabi. And verse 21, For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of men. So ito pong salita ng Diyos na dumating sa atin is not by the will of men. So men are just mere instruments. And look at this, But holy men of god but holy men of god speak as they were moved by the holy ghost so these holy men of god they speak so remember they're holy men and they speak as they were moved by the holy ghost so of course itong verse na ito is is also talking is talking first to to men who wrote the bible nung ginagamit po ng Dios they were holy men who wrote the bible but i believe mga kapatid the application of this verse is not just limited to those men who wrote the bible but i believe po mga kapatid this verse could even be applied to those holy men also whom god used to translate the bible Okay, to translate the Bible into the language where we can understand. And I believe that with all of my heart na and napatunayan po yan by the evidence and by the fruit of the lives of these King James translators that they were indeed, they were indeed, amen, holy men. And makikita po natin po mga kapatid na ang kanilang buhay po mga kapatid, they're, they're not just They are not just pastors and preachers and doctors and scholars and linguists. You know, they are also holy men of God when it comes to their God-given abilities. Yes, they are exceptional 
and but looking at also their diligence and abiding walk with the Lord. At yun po mga kapatid, they were spiritual. They were they were they were godly men. They were holy men. And according to the testimony ng mga King James translators, they said that they are 54, but the form of the 54th is like the Son of God. So they believe that God, this is still God's work, this is still God's handiwork, and that God used them just like that pen, giving them wisdom, giving them that understanding. And you could see that by their testimonies. Doon po sa kanilang biographies po, mga kapatid. And, and looking at the King James Bible po, mga kapatid, uh, and these translators, these men knew firsthand, okay, that Rome and its rulers and uh, that could tolerate the Bible only in, in letters of Greek, only in Latin and in Hebrew. But they knew also uh, that these Romish rulers would burn the Bible book by book or page by page or word by word, okay, when it is translated into English, which the Holy Ghost could speak directly to men also with no mediator and through that, but they, they forbid that. And, and the King James Bible now, it's nearly 400 years of spiritual fruit. It used to be written to at least 5 million to 6 million people, okay, in, in the Isles of England, within the Isles of England, mga kabatid. But right now, it reached to all the world. Amen. According to Winston Churchill during the World War II, and that the King James, the King James Bible had been translated already to, to around 700 languages. Just take note on that. Translated at their time to 700 languages. But think about right now how many languages and dialect that this King James had been their final authority when it comes to translation. Po, mga kabatid. And it is now 400 years. It is 400 years of its spiritual fruit. And it show forth po mga kabatid what the translator bore of that unquenched spirit's fruit po mga kabatid. And these translators, as you know, they were top achievers in England at the time, mga kapatid, academically, they're top achievers. But as we study their lives, it appears spiritually as well that they're top, they're godly men, holy men. And they had risen to their position as college presidents, their deans, their head of schools or head of departments like Greek and Hebrew and Latin or other language or linguistic studies. And that's they are. And they were not only preachers and pastors and doctors and scholars and linguists, but they had surpassed thousands of men with similar training. And during a time when speaking Greek or speaking Latin, or speaking Hebrew and foreign languages was common for university students. They were, they surpass all of them. And I believe we, the, this, the, this was the time before us that it will not come again. Amen. It will not come again. And I don't think that there is a man, okay, who live in our time and age with the same training that could that could uh, parallel when it comes to what they know and to what they learn. But that was not the greatest assets that they have. The greatest assets that they have is they all believe the Bible to be the very word of God. They all believe that the Bible, even if it's translated, is still the word of God and still the inspired word of God. That's why that gives them that dedication. And our men, these men, they were eyewitnesses when the Bible were forbidden. 
when speaking, preaching, and translating the Bible were forbidden. Some of those martyrs, they were eyewitnesses of those who were burned at stake, those who were persecuted in their, in their time, during most especially in the time of Bloody Mary. They were eyewitnesses. And some of them are their fathers. Some of them are their uncles. Some of those martyrs are their, are their pastors, were their pastors. Some of them were their friends. Some of them were their relatives. Some of them were dear, dear to their lives. And they were eyewitnesses of those things. They stand because during those days, pag may ipipersecute at, at i-execute po mga kapatid, mag, may ibiburn doon sa stake po na yon. It, it should be done in the plaza because to become an example and to afflict fear, inflict fear to many. And they were there standing, watching their brothers, watching their pastors, watching some of their parents burn at stake. These were eyewitnesses. They understand the necessity of having a translation. They understand of the great cause, but it doesn't waver them. It did not waver them. It did not derail their purpose. But through that, they get strength. They get some, they get some ano po, mga kapatid, encouragement. And they determine in their hearts that one of these days, they will have the Bible printed in every hand of the people of England. And they did. In 1611, the, was the printing and uh, the translation was over, was done. The project was accomplished. And not only the accomplishment of this, not only in the hands of the people of England, but also in the hands of the people in all the world, in the Christian in all the world. Just think about that, brethren. This was the answer to the prayer of William Tyndale. When while he was burned at stake, at the top of his voice, he cried out, Lord, open the eyes of the King of England. And guess what? The ver those kings, it was kings who made an order to burn all Bibles in English, to burn those who preach the Bible, burn those those who read the Bible and to have a copy of the Bible. But it is also the king of England who ordered such translations of the English Bible where they can understand. And it was the king of England also by the name of King James I. Amen. Who ordered so that this book should be read in all homes and in all churches, and in all houses, in every individual. It was the working of God. And this, the instrumentality of these people, their, their exceptional God-given abilities, alongside with their diligence and abiding walk with the Lord, set them at that pinnacle, set them at that pinnacle of academic environment where Child, school children were educated at the level above that of many of today's uh, universities. Wala pong makasurpass ng ganun po mga kapatid na makikita po natin. And uh, under, that, under that light started that shine during the reign of Elizabeth I where these things was realized. Amen. And the printing now of the English Bible has proved to be by far the mightiest barrier ever reared to repel. Wala. There is no such Bible that has ever been persecuted. Wala. But this book. Pero the Lord has break through all those barriers. And he repelled even the advance of popery, the advance of Romanism and Catholicism. And even this, this, there is no book that hurt such damage to Vatican and the papacy. This book over here, the King James Bible. 
That's why this hated. None of the modern version have accomplished what this book have accomplished. None of the mo modern versions have been used mightily by God such this book, o mga kapatid. And yes, it was intended originally for at least five million or six millions who dwelt within that British islands, without Isles of England, and it once formed and fixed their language. It was it helped to to fix their language. It till then unsettled, but nung dumating ang King James, na fix ang kanilang grammar, na fix ang kanila pong uh, language po mga kapatid. And has since gone with the language to the Isles of Shores of every sea. And this very language that we studied, we read, we understand, we enjoy, we delight with every day, every time we hear it, every time we meditate it. And it's been 400 years po mga kapatid. And it has gladdened the hearts of many. It caused revivals. It caused, amen, the establishment of kingdoms. It, 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 used, it was used by God to establish a nation to make some, uh, ano po mga kapatid, it, it become a foundation of a constitution and it, it, it gladdens also the heart of millions upon millions, even billions. Amen. I believe so. Who had been touched by the power of God through this word. Mga kapatid, at the present day, and the English is probably the vernacular tongue of more millions than any other one language under heaven. And the English Bible has brought and still brings home to the knowledge of God's revealed truth to a myriad of more of minds than ever received it through the original tongue. Not even the Hebrew language or the Greek language or the Greek Bible or the Hebrew Bible have surpassed on how the, how God used this Bible over here for 400 years. Just think about that. May, maybe next, after this, we will talk about the heritage of the King James Bible. We will study about that, the heritage of the King James Bible. And that's one thing that we need to understand and we need to know, the heritage of the, that's another wonderful lesson as we discuss about these things, po mga kapatid. Amen. So with that, let's look at uh, pag-aralan po natin last time, po mga kapatid. Let me share our screen. Na umpisahan na po natin last time. Uh, let me share my screen, po mga kapatid, para makita po natin. At uh, ito po ay pag-usapan po natin. Ito po, itong area po na ito. Itong... Um, ito mga translators. Okay? Mga translators ng Panginoon. Okay? Ito po yung translators ng King James. We know they're divided into six companies. Okay? Dalawa sa Westminster. Dal dalawa po mga kapatid sa Cambridge. And dalawa po sa sa um, Oxford. Okay? So yun po yung mga dalawang lugar. And we will start with Westminster po company, the first Westminster company, the first company kasi dalawa po. And um, of course, mga kapatid, we learn about itong kanilang translation. Uh, they translated from Genesis all the way to the book of Second Kings. Yun po ang, they're in charge with Genesis all the way, the book of Second Kings. So the first time na ating diniscuss po ito po mga kapatid, nung napag-usapan po natin is Ito pong si Lancelot Andrew, which is also the president of this company ng Westminster. He's the president of this company. So he was in charge of, of selecting some, um, ano po mga kapatid, some of um, uh, yung mga translators po dito. Siya yung nag-organize itong group ng Westminster since siya yung president po mga kapatid. And this is such a decorated a decorated, a very well-known man in England, a de well-decorated not only in his academics, but even in his spirituality. As we learn about Lancelot Andrews, that he spent his vacations each year 
learning a new language. Yun po ang kanyang ginagawa, no? And for total of 15 languages, mga kapatid, I'm talking about when he, when you say he learn about 15 languages, he could write illegibly and speak rightly, write, speak. Amen. Ito pong languages na 15 languages na ito to the point that he has some of 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 lexicons made from other languages some of his writings some of his contributions so this skill cost thomas fuller church historian in 1800 to suggest that andrews could have been interpreter general at the tower of babel you know sa tower of babel may confusion pwede siya magiging interpreter general at least he can translate into 15 languages kung nandun siya. So ganun po siya kagaling. Ibig sabihin po mga kapatid, he can understand, he can read, he can speak, he can write eligibly. Ito pong mga 15 languages na meron po siya po mga kapatid. So when speaking of qualification, amen, isa po sa mga, he is good at po mga kapatid, is yung Greek, is yung Hebrew, is yung Latin, Persian language, at, and many more. Arabic, even Arabic language po mga kapatid. Magaling po siya. Yung mga major languages, he's known of that. And as a child, he studied so hard when others played. Okay? Yun po eh. Yun po. Hindi naman nagiging kaagad dumating sa kanya. But while others are playing, but he was studying that if his parents and masters had not forced him to play, with them. Kaya nag-aaral yan kung mapalaro mo ba yan si Lancelot Andrews during his childhood. Okay, dahil napilitan po siya, pinilit po siya, kaya nakapaglaro po siya po mga kapatid. But kung hindi siya pipilitin, you will choose to study rather than playing po mga kapatid. And each year, he walked 30 miles home from college to see his parents during uh, spring vacation. And his walking partner was a well-known Edmund Spencer, the now world-famous uh, poet po, mga kapatid, who invented that uh, Spencerian stanza. He was a poet po, mga kapatid. Of course, just think, mga kapatid, they, they were part of the Shakespearean period. And of course, we know William Shakespeare. They're known of this, but this Spencerian uh, ano po, con uh, this Spencerian stanza that was contributed as part of the poetic devices made his poetry so musical that he became known as the poet's poet. He was the poet's poet. So it was not, it was not given that such title was not given to, to William Shakespeare, but it was given to Edmund Spencer. At yun po ang kanya pong Araw-araw na pag maglalakad po sila po mga kabatid, or I mean, sa every time pa sila, yun kayong ka-walking partner po niya. And the, 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 the result of that, Lancelot Andrew become a dean of Westminster. And then Andrew had children bring him their exercise says in poetry and verse to examine their proficiency. So with that, that was the, the inherit po niya sa kanyang kaibigan po mga kabatid. And as, as preacher, he was a chaplain to Queen Elizabeth and called the stars of preachers. So you are a chaplain to a queen, to a monarch. So you must be outstanding. And you must be a decorated preacher. Kasi paano ka makakuha ng official preacher kay Queen Elizabeth? Just take note, Queen Elizabeth. And that's why he bore the title as the stars of preachers. Amen. And as such, he was the means of converting many papists by his preaching and disputation. And in his, in his preaching, marami pong na-convert po mga kapatid. Marami po ang na, na, natulungan even yung mga leaders ng mga Catholic churches during those days po mga kapatid. At ganun po. And above all po mga kapatid, in his humility. And the motto that he engraved on his seal, you know, they have seal. And he will say, and who is sufficient for these things? So he's simply saying that they are not sufficient. 
But that verse is verse 16. But if you read continually verse 17, for we are not as many which corrupt the word of God. Amen. So that's the continuation of the verse where we are not as many which corrupt the word of God. And thank God for that po mga kapatid. May kita po natin, isa sa mga translators, sasabihin niya, uh, we are not as many and we are not sufficient of these things. Ibig sabihin, they, they give that acknowledgement, amen, to the Son of God who helped them po mga kapatid. And according to many historians, they said, that many hours he spent each day in private and family devotions. At ito po yung most outstanding para sa kanya po mga kapatid is Lancelot Andrews spent five hours a day in prayer. He spent five hours a day in prayer. So with that regard po mga kapatid, such a godly man, not only having an outstanding po mga kapatid, knowledge on language, but, mga kapatid, even in his spiritual life, he spent five hours a day in prayer. Do you know of somebody? Do you know of a pastor? Do you know of a spiritual Christian? Do you know of, 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 of anybody who prayed five hours a day? Now, we prayed every day, and I understand that. But can you pray five hours a day? We love to sing sweet hours of prayer, sweet hour of prayer. But the truth of the matter is sweet seconds of prayer or sweet minutes of prayer, not an hour of prayer. But this man over here is known of that. Now, who among you have known of other translators and of the modern version, the life of the translators of the modern versions? You could not even find them. They kept it secret. They hide it. But we, the King James Bible and the King James translators, they're transparent. They're men of, in history. They're well known. Their, their, their life is an open book, po, mga kapatid. You could read about them. You could know them. You could even Google them, po, mga kapatid, for more information. You la, click the Lancelot Andrews King James translators, and you can, there are a lot of information na ma ma makikita mo patungkol sa kanila. What we're saying po mga kapatid, these are the men na ginagamit po ng Panginoon po mga kapatid and their life is an open book unlike some of the translators of the NIV, unlike the translators of other modern versions, they are oneness, they don't believe that Christ is God and some of their translators are even, are even open practice lesbian and by the name of Virginia Molincott, one of the one of the translators of the NIV. And you think about that, po, mga kabadet. And who wrote a book that God is a she, that God is a woman, a female. Could you imagine that? Such translators. Could you trust? Ikaw po. Ikaw. Could you trust somebody na magturo sa yung anak? na isang bakla or openly practice the bakla, magchuchutor sa yung anak. Could you trust that? Ikaw, Kristiano, you know the Bible? Could you give your child na, na tuturuan ng isang bakla? Of course, you don't. Amen. Hindi ka, hindi ka papayat. You will not allow that. Now, in our Bibles po, mga kapatid, papayag ka na ang translators ng, ng Bible natin ay openly practice ng mga lesbians or homosexuals, yung iba po mga kapatid. And even, we don't even know yung iba po mga maraming mga translators ng modern version. Only po ang King James Bible na men behind the kings. May biography, full biography, full history of their lives. Pero sa modern version, wala ka naman makikita ang ganun. How could you trust a Bible na nabasa mo that you don't even know who's behind it? You don't even know yung sino yung mga tao na nandyan po mga kapatid na ginagamit or nagsusulat, nagka-translate and wala din tayong capacity to know them. Not only they're unknown people, baka nga marami sa kanila ay hindi ligtas. Mga marami sa kanila are mga uh, they're not Bible believers. They deny the Bible. They deny inspiration. They deny the truthfulness of the word of god 
si karamihan sa project po nila po mga kabatid ay dahil lang sa printing, dahil lang sa makita ng pera. But the King James Bible was never uh, translated to become a business. This was the purpose of this translation is to be distributed and this was this was ordered and authorized by the king. And here comes the modern version. Amen. You know who authorized them? Who told them that they should? They just naisipan lang nila sa sarili nila at mag-translate sila at kumikita sila ng pera. It's all about that printing. It's all about that copyright na magiging kita po nila at ilan pong yumayaman sa kanila. But do you know that? Is there any account of full biography of their life, their background, or history? Any of those translators po mga kapatid? I know of some backgrounds of the modern versions like James Strong, one of the translators committee of the revised version of the Westcott and Hort. I know Westcott. I know Hort po mga kapatid. We have some 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 ano po, uh, excerpts of their biographies. But one thing we know, they don't believe that the Bible to be the word of God, to be absolute word of God. And James Strong is is even the one who wrote the Strong's Concordance. He is oneness. He is Unitarian. He don't believe that Christ is God. Hello. And many other things na weird po mga kabadid. They, they don't believe that their translation can be inspired. And of course, tama sila doon because it can never be because it came from the Westcott and Hort. And many other po mga kabadid. Pag-usapan, napag-usapan natin ata yan. Ay, di, di pa pala. Di pa natin napag... Oh, napag-usapan natin yun na, la, na nakaraan nung mga dati-dati pa po mga kabatid. Yung mga 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 men na ito behind ang mga false Bibles. And my point po mga kabatid is this is the kind of men na ginamit ng Panginoon. No wonder, amen, no wonder yung fruit or yung yung result ng kanilang project is the King James Bible and parallel Bible. Amen. Unrivaled word of God. It is outstanding when it comes to its fruit, when it comes to its its heritage and by their fruits you shall know them. And the fruit of these men is the King James Bible po mga kapatid. And think about that. And also the second one that we learn is John Overall. Si John Overall, it part pa rin siya ng first company ng Westminster and and uh, he was raised as an orphan. Yes, but Overall became such a Latin scholar, it troubled him to speak English. Alam niyo po, makarelate makarelate ka minsan po nito, no? Sometimes when you learn a language, sa sobrang Sanay ka na sa language na yun. Hindi ka na marunong or ma, hindi naman marunong. It will trouble you to speak sa original vernacular mo. Now, for example, for example, when we came to Luzon for 20, almost 20 years now since we came here dito sa Luzon po mga kapatid, I, of course, I used to speak sa either English or even Tagalog. So I try... I try my best po mga kapatid na magtagalog because this is a tagalog ano po mga kapatid uh, yung ang um, lugar na uh, sa Manila especially so pinipilit ko of course nahirapan din ako hindi up to now nahirapan pa rin ako I'm not well versed po doon so mix kaya ang aking aking ano I have troubled ko anong language ang gagamitin ko mix mix lang po yun mga kapatid now pagkauwi ko doon sa aking lupang sinilangan sa Cebu and even even nung when I tried to speak in Cebuano or preach in Cebuano, I have trouble. Nung the last time po na pumun- bumalik po kami, I mean, pumunta kami ng Mindanao. So I have to speak because in Cebuano, dahil lang amin pong ano po mga kapatid, I mean, pure Cebuano, dahil lang amin pong uh, audience doon ay mga tribes. And and uh, mahirapan sila makaintindi ng Tagalog at lalo na English. Hindi sila masyado makapagsalita Tagalog. 
lalo na English at mag 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 ano po mga kapatid. So you have to go down. And I it really gives me trouble. Dahil yung of course na, nasanay ka na sa isang lingwahe but praise God sa grace ng Panginoon na ituro din naman. But hindi ba? So you have to rehearse yourself again and again para masanay po doon sa sa lingwahe. Although that was my main language, I can understand it, mga kapatid. Um, um, pag may magpipreach at may magsalita, pero pag of course, pag, pag mag, magsalita ka, ikaw na magsalita, it, it, it has to be na ma-rehearse mo at least mga pag-preach ka, two to three messages na si Buano sa kakamasanay. Then later on doon sa Mindanao, nasasanay din ako, na-enjoy ko na din. Amen. And ganun ang nangyayari kay overall sa sobra niyang sa sobra niyang sanay sa Latin po mga kabatid ay nahihirapan po siyang magsalita ng English. Now yet as a pastor responding to a soul sick church member uh, who wondered it uh, who wondered if Christ died for him kasi may mga meron po uso kasi sa kanilang time very rampant sa kanilang time yung Calvinism dahil po sa movement ni John Calvin sa England, very rampant din po mga kabatid. Ang Calvinism doon, hindi lang sa Switzerland, hindi lang sa Geneva. But even sa England, madaming umabot po doon ng mga Calvinists. But overall, preach a simple sermon which he exposed the error of Calvinism. And this was one of the excerpt ng kanyang message. He said, Christ died for all men sufficiently. For the believer only effectually. So Christ died for for all men sufficiently for the believer only effectually. That's truth because the Bible says Christ is the Savior of all men, especially them that believe. Okay? So He is the Savior of all men. He's sufficient for all men. All men could be potentially be saved if they will just believe. But Christ is effect effectually. Uh, yung kanyang ginawa is to those believer po mga kabatid. Sabi niya, as the sun that shineth sufficiently to give light to all, though it doth it effectually only to them that open their eyes, as the water that is sufficient to quench all thirsty, but that it only to them that drink it. So Christ, the sum of righteousness, the water of life. So take note on that. What a good argument that he used. So obviously, our translators were not Calvinists. Amen. They were not Calvinists. And thank God for that. They understand that Christ died for all. And it is, amen. And they understand also that the effect of Christ's work is only to those who believe. So they understand on the necessity of faith. That faith alone, po mga kapatid. Amen. They understand that. Amen. Next po, I, additional sa kay, kay John Overall, sabi niya, Overall's burden for souls of men, ito, maganda po to, ushered him to the side of Father Henry Garnet. Who is Father Henry Garnet? Uh, just as this murder, he was the one behind the gunpowder plot by Guy Fox. na Yun po, yung, yun po yung ginamit nilang assassin but he was behind this of the gunpowder plot. If you remember of that gunpowder plot po mga kapatid, this was the plot in attempt to bomb the Hampton Court. The Hampton Court po mga kapatid kung saan nandun yung king, nandun yung mga King James translators na nagkaroon sila ng meeting for this translation po mga kapatid. At meron pong tunnel po doon, nagdig ko sila, nilagyan po ng barrels of gunpowder at si Guy Fox po yung yung kanila pong ano ang kanila pong ang kanila pong assassin po doon but bago sindihan po yung gunpowder it could it could ano po explode and it could destroy not only the building in Hampton Court but all of them that are there po mga kapatid, including the king and including the translators this was the attempt of the of the Vatican to assassinate those who who make the project of the Bible but nahuli po mga kapatid by God's providence and this was 
celebrated ngayon sa England in November 5. In November 5. At yun po ang parang New Year sa kanilang November 5 kasi sa November 5, meron silang paputok. This was in memory po. Mga, nagpapaputok po sila in November 5. This was in memory of that uh, providence of God sa gunpowder plot. Kaya if you know that expression, remember, remember the 5th of November. This was the time po mga kapatid. Remember, remember the 5th of November. This was, that was the gunpowder plot. There was a, there was ano po mga kapatid, a providential or in, a, uh, intervention ng Panginoon na hindi po ito matuloy. At nahuli po yun. At nalaman kung sinong mastermind. And this was the mastermind. Father Henry Garnett po mga kapatid. But although si John overall was one of those potential people could have died doon po sa kung natuloy po itong gunpowder plot po na ito. But look at si overall po mga kapatid begged him. He begged this Father Henry Garnett to trust Jesus Christ as Savior and express a true and lively faith toward God. He said, you express that lively faith toward God. And the answer of Henry Garnett was, Garnett told him not to bother him. Of course, hindi na siya, hindi na siya ano po, accountable po doon. Although ayaw ba ni Garnett, although pwede mong, pwede, pwede mong ka, kamuian dahil yun po ang, ang nag-attempt to murder you but itong si John overall ay nagbigay pa siya ng pagkakataon na marinig ni Garnet ang salita ng Diyos uh, but of course he refused amen so yun po mga kapatid now let's go now to Henry Saville si Henry Saville po mga kapatid is another another well known sa kanilang company And with this, ang kanyang biography, his skills range from uh, the tutor to Queen Elizabeth. So one of his skills is a tutor to Queen Elizabeth. Just think about that. When you are called a chaplain or a tutor, you must be somebody. You must be, hindi ka lang dapat pipitsugin po mga kapatid. And, and ano po mga kapatid? And even a tutor in Latin, in Greek, And mathematics. By the way, if you look at Henry Saville, meron din siyang contribution sa mathematics. Mathematician din to, hindi lang to historian. And he is also a translator of histories of Tacitus. He was one of the Roman historian po mga kapatid. Tacitus is, ano po ito ni, uh, kakontemporary po ito ni Josephus, a Jewish historian naman po mga kapatid. If you know your history, if you're reading, There is a well-known Jewish historian by the name of Josephus. Okay? And who, a first century na historian. And ito din po, no? Uh, first century historian din. Itong si Tacitus. I mean, itong si, si Hen, uh, I'm talking about si Tacitus, yes. At ang, siya po ang nag-translate sa work ni Tacitus. And he, he, he traversed a Europe gathering rare and Greek manuscript of the Bible and ancient manuscripts of the works of the great 4th century a Greek preacher, si John Chrysostom po mga kabatid. So, siya po yung nag, nag, nag-gather doon. Itong si Grant, uh, ano po ito yung mga, mga collections of manuscript where, which we call the pre, okay, pre-Wycliffe, Okay, Bibles. These are the pre-Wycliffe Bible, the Anglo-Saxons Bible po, mga kapatid. And that's very known and it was really a great help sa kanilang translation project po, mga kapatid. And later, he he compiled and published in eight volume set sa lahat ng nakolek niya. And the writings of Chrysostom allowed the King James translators to see firsthand the true text of the earliest Greek New Testament. So meron talaga silang uh, ano po mga kapatid yung original autograph of that ano po earliest Greek manuscript not the original autograph of the Bible but just a Greek Bible po mga kapatid and one of those earliest Greek Bibles 
nakuha po nila. And si Saville gave a very early edition of the Gospels in Russian to the Bolian, uh, Bodleian Library as a gift. So gumagawa din siya. So parang ano po ang kanyang translation work talaga. Gumagawa siya ng translation ng Matthew, Mark, Luke, John at binigay po niya itong gift sa isang library sa Russia po mga kapatid. And he was an expert on the earliest English Bible manuscript publishing from original manuscripts the, the written histories of England before Bede. Bede is another prominent leader po mga kapatid. These are the pre-Wycliffe era. I'm talking about around 700 AD or 800 AD po mga kapatid. And Saville would have been well aware of the text of the oldest English Bibles because ito yung sabi niya, our record tells us of translation of the whole Bible into the same language, which is the Saxon by Bida, which is Bid, Pumadid, within 40 years after the 700. Okay, here, 700 AD, po, mga kapatid. So you see this. This is part ng collection sila ng completion. Nakita po nila. They have that copy. Unlike sa mga modern version translators, alam niyo kung ano mga copy meron sila? Ginagamit nila galing daw sa Greek, Hebrew. Pero ang mga copy na meron sila po mga kapatid, na mga modern na mga copy, some of them are Dead Sea Scroll that is just found around 1950s, 1960s. But itong mga copies na meron sila available na manuscript ay sobrang dami. Volumes of them. Pero itong mga modern version po mga kapatid, meron, wala naman silang ganong, wala naman sila ganong uh, access una sa lahat. They, their, their, ano po, their translation was just sponsored by themselves. They just group together, they find some sponsor. But listen very carefully, ang sponsor po ng mga King James translators po natin ay they are backed up with the, with the kingdom, with the England. Uh, the, uh, the, I mean, uh, the kingdom of England. The whole of that po mga kapatid. So they have access to library. They have access even to ancient libraries. And some collections of those manuscripts The libraries in Oxford, the ancient libraries in 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 Cambridge, is West in Westminster or any other, even in libraries they have access in any other libraries in Europe, which none of the translators could have such access today. Wala nang ganon po mga kapatid. Amen. So that's their contribution. Now let's go to Hadrian Sarabia. What, when when I put only a name, Adrian Sarabia, that means po mga kapatid, wala po silang picture. Wala ko mahanap na record ng kanilang picture. But Adrian Sarabia is another uh, man behind the first okay Westminster Company. And at ito po ang kanyang buhay. This translator reserved a doctor of divinity at Oxford. So they're not just doctors of philosophy, but doctors of divinity and where his skills in Hebrew was unsurpassed. So this was one of the description of Buhay ni Hadrian Sarabia. When it comes to Hebrew, it was unsurpassed. By the way, ang mga Greek Hebrew teachers ngayon po mga kapatid, nakapag-aral lang na isang taon, isang semester, ang akala mo ang galing-galing na magsalita ng Hebrew. Oh, it comes from the Greek word, it comes from the Hebrew word, isa o isang taon o isang semester po mga kapatid ng, ng course nila sa Bible school. Akala mo ang galing-galing. Ang galing-galing magsasabi na I'm good in this Hebrew and that. Pero kung bigyan mo ng Hebrew Bible, kung Hebra mo ng, bigyan mo ng Greek Bible, they could not even read it. Ang totoo lang, ginaya lang naman nila yun. At hindi naman, they could not even write it. They could not even speak it po mga kapatid. At if, just in case they learn The Hebrew or the the ano po the Greek they, they were not the ancient Greek and Hebrew were supposedly the original tongues. Anong meron po sila po mga, mga bukot bukot po yun eh. Pero ang galing ng mga mga magiklaim pa nila ang akala mo kung sino. Kaya na napa preach tule ako ng preaching dante. And title is Hush, you don't speak Greek. mga kabaden. Kasi Akala mo, pag, kung sinong makakorek sa King James Bible, akala mo, sobrang galing eh. One of the acid tests that they are 
they are they, they could be qualified as a critic of the King James Bible is this. Give them a Greek Bible, give them a Hebrew Bible and wait and let them read it. Tingnan mo. Kung hindi nila mabasa yun po mga kapatid, they cannot validate their claim. But our King James translator when it comes to this Hebrew, Greek and language, these are their bread and butter. Ito yung kanilang mga sinasabi sa salita. These are just very common to them. And you know, they went to universities not to study language. They went to universities to teach Hebrew, Greek, Latin, and which we will learn about that as we go on. So where his, his skill po mga kapatid in Hebrew was unsurpassed and he was sent by Queen Elizabeth. Take note, he was sent by Queen Elizabeth. So could you imagine this? How many monarchs, when you talk about monarchs, no? Um, they're, they're not the same like the president that we have right now. But king, we're talking about king and queens. We're talking about power. We're talking about access. We're talking about all these things. Na meron po sila sa panahon po nila. So she was sent by Queen Elizabeth and later on become the translators that King James appointed. So you can imagine two monarchs and he was sent as a missionary to the islands of Jersey po, mga kapatid, or and Jersey. And the preaching of God's word was planted there through his efforts. So he was even a missionary. And he worked as a professor also at the university in Leiden, Holland, and as a pastor of a French church in that city. He also published papers against Jesuits and against Calvinists. And obviously, itong mga translators po natin were anti-Vatican and they were anti-Calvinist. And I like that. And this Bible is anti-Vatican and anti-Calvinist. Take note on that po mga kapatid. No wonder Calvinists would not dwell on this on this ano po mga kapatid book. May mga Calvinista dyan na nag-aaral ng King James daw. King James ang totoong Bible. But if they learn po mga kapatid that ang mga King James translators were never Calvinist, baka ma-discourage sila. Baka magamit na sila ng ibang Bible po mga kapatid. Can you imagine? Nandun ako, by the way, nandun ako sa, nandun ako sa, sa, sa Baguio. So habang nagpipreach ako doon, may nagko-comment doon. Mag-ingat kayo sa preacher na yan. Baka, baka reform yan or baka Calvinist yan. And I don't know po mga kapatid kung ano naisip ng mga tao po na yan. But I'm one of those preachers who preach hard against it. And could never agree, not a bit. Amen. To those things. And, uh, but, pero yung mga nagsasabi sa atin na mga, baka mga reform yan or Calvinist yan, their doctrines is even closely related to Calvinists or Calvinism. Hello? Yun po yung naging problema. No? So, mahirap talaga pag slander lang or accusations lang po mga kapatid. Most likely sila yun. And kung papansinin mo, they reject covenant, theo- uh, they reject rightly dividing. So, ibig sabihin, if they reject rightly dividing, they're automatic made them a covenant theology man. So a covenant theology man, that's the theology of the Calvinist. So yun pong bira po. But as what I have tell you, ito mga, mga ginagamit ng King James Bible, amen, they were anti, amen, na mga Jesuits, which is, by the way, do you understand who are the Jesuits? He was, uh, it was Ignatius de Loyola was the founder of the Jesuits. Do you know what? This is the spiritual arm. This was the spiritual arm of uh, Vatican. When I say spiritual arm, ito yung mga assassins nila. Ito yung mga group of people na pinapadala nila pagdating sa mga spiritual mga agendas nila. So sila yung mga nang, na, naninira ng churches, mo, churches, ng mga Protestant churches, ng mga mga Christian churches, sila yung mga nagsispread ng lies, nagsispread ng gossip, sila yung, na, sila yung as in military arm. I'm talking about a military arm of Vatican po mga kapatid. These are the Jesuits. Yung mga panahon po na yun. 
And ang dami nilang mga minurder, ang dami po nilang sinu- sila yung behind, sila yung mga nanguuli, sila yung mga nagre-report, sila yung mga nag nagano po mga kapatid nag-i-infiltrate na mag-aak na kunyari pastor sila, kunyari mga ganun. Tapos ang dami nilang mga ginagawa. And this this work of the Jesuits have been exposed by many books and many historical accounts po mga kapatid. Amen. So Hadrian Sarabia published that at pag ikaw ay you publish such paper against the Jesuits and Calvinists, you will be in hot waters. You might be assassinated, you might be killed, you might be... Ay, ito ko, delikado ka po mga kapatid. Magiging controversial ka sa mga panahon na ito, ha? sa mga panahon na ito. Amen. Si Adrian Saravia at 73 years old, he was the oldest man in his company, 73 years old, translator, and the senior of all the King James Bible translators. Siya yung pinakamatanda. Ang pinakamatanda ay 73 years old si Hadrian Saravia. He brought to the task of translation a lifetime of scholarship. Take note on that. Ang kanyang, ang kanyang nagiging ano po, resume po mga kapatid is a lifetime of scholarship and experiences which must have been an enormous contribution to his company. And we believe that because he's an experienced man He's been in that craft po, mga kapatid, for a long time. And makikita mo po, it has been a great contribution sa kanyang company po, mga kapatid. And in addition to his other duties, he worked also on various theological projects until his death. So marami po siya. Na, na, na ipakita ko sa inyo dati po, mga kapatid, yung mga works po, mga kapatid, ng mga, mga translators po na ito po, mga kapatid. I gave you their works na mga translators na ito. And let me, uh, tingnan ko nga kung ma- mahanap ko po mga kapatid yung, yung work ng translators na ito. And makikita po natin po mga kapatid, meron silang mga write-ups. Yung mga sinusulat po nila po mga kapatid. Wala dito. Hindi ko mahanap kung saan ko na nakita po yun. Pinost ko yun one time po mga kapatid ang kanilang uh, work. Okay? Anyway, um, well, well, we'll try to find that, pero hindi ko mahanap po mga kapatid. And next, sabi dito, Hadrian Saravia wrote and published materials about the savages of America and a treatise on dif- different degrees of Christian priesthood. So he believed on priesthood of all believers and in this po mga kapatid, he wrote about America because America that time was called as the New World. And he wrote about the American Indians there. He wrote about those settlers doon po, patungkol po doon po mga kapatid. So this is Adrian Sarabia. Ang next po mga kapatid ay si uh, Dr. Richard Clark. Bibilisan po natin. Oh. Si Dr. Richard Clark po mga kapatid, he is... Again, another ano po, translator of this first Westminster company po, mga kapatid. And Dr. Clark is spoken of as a fellow of Christ College, uh, Cambridge po, mga kapatid. And as a very learned clergyman and eminent preacher, he has been described as a learned Hebraist. So Hebraist, pag, pag Hebraist mga kapatid, ibig sabihin, he is a speaker of Hebrew. So that was, history called him a learned Hebraist po mga kapatid. So, of course, in, uh, hindi mo pwedeng ma-deny sa kanya, nakaakibat sa kanya that he is expert in, in Hebrew po mga kapatid. He was vicar of, of Minster and Mon, Moncton in Thanet. And of course, ito po, isa sa mga, mga decorated qualification niya, one of the six preachers of the Cathedral Church in Canterbury. This this ano po this uh uh cathedrals in Canterbury this was itong six preachers na na isineselect po mga kapatid this was originated by Oliver Cromwell around 1541 and he was one of those ano po mga kapatid na napili po so ito po na nakasabi dito these men were to be well educated and articulate so ibig sabihin kung ikaw ay ma-qualify as the six preachers po, mga kapatid, you must be somebody. You must be that educated and you must be that 
articulate po mga kapatid pagdating sa iyong craft okay pagdating sa pag, pagtuturo and they were to preach reformation sermons yun po ang goal nila kasi remember they nagspread po dito ang protestantism at ang kanyang preaching is reformation but their members were to include equal numbers of conformists and those in sympathy with puritan views so lahat po yun yun po ang mga nag-attend po mga kapatid na kasama nila so kung mapili ka kumbaga mga special unit po ito na mga preachers para lang mag magdoctrinate or magtuturo ng mga reformation ng mga teachings po mga kapatid he died in 1634 and three years later after his death po mga kapatid a folio volume of his learned sermon was published so nagkaroon din siya ng book kinumpile ang lahat ng kanyang sermon po mga kapatid it was published kinumpile ang lahat ng kanyang sermon tapos ginawang book po mga kapatid that's dr richard clark another thing po mga kapatid is si john layfield si john layfield so another uh, ano po another member of the first westminster company si john layfield Field. And Dr. Layfield worked toward the conversion of the savages of America. So he traveled there in that America and he was one of the early missionaries there while traveling as chaplain on the expedition across Atlantic Ocean. And, and also he described America's inhabitants as naked except for chains and bracelets. It's daw, yun daw lang, meron lang sa kalam, may mga dam, adaming chains and brace. Ito yung mga original na mga Amerikano ha. Kasi yung mga Amerikano na nakikita nating mga puti, ay mga British yun. Okay? Na nag-migrate po doon sa, sa, sa New World na yan, which we know now America. And, pero ito yung mga, mga native talaga, which we call it the American Indians. They were naked except for chains and bracelets and jewelry for piercing their nostril or lips and boring of their lips and earring and, and ears. So yun lang ang meron nila. So wala silang saplot pero madami silang accessories. <laughs> and his extensive knowledge of art, architecture po mga kapatid. Ito yung isa sa mga, isa po ito sa mga, mga strength ni John Layfield. He was good in this architecture and was helpful in translation work of the Old Testament temple and tabernacle. So of course, siya po yun, di ba? Nilay ng Panginoon po doon po mga kapatid, yung structure ng tabernacle at ng temple, may mga measures at lahat po doon. Isa po ang kanyang expertise na katulong po sa, sa pag-interpret at sa pag, pag, uh, pag ano po mga kapatid, yung measure kung anong sinabi po ng Panginoon po doon. So, of him it is said that being skilled in architecture, his judgment was much relied on for the fabric of the tabernacle and temple. So, because of that, he was relied too much on the fabric of the tabernacle and the temple or even on those measurements. So, doon sila tumatakbo kay John Layfield po mga kapatid. And with that. And the next one is Geoffrey King. The next one is Geoffrey King po mga kapatid. We'll, we'll have two more siguro. And with this, uh, si Geoffrey uh, left home at an early age to begin his preparatory education at Eton. And by the way, he became a professor later on in, in that place at King's and sa Cambridge at King's ano po mga kapatid. King's College. So he continued his studies at Cambridge spending several decades there as a student, then the teacher, then a scholar. So at a very early age, he was a student, then a teacher, then later on a scholar in that same place and same university. So in the course of his life, Geoffrey King was given many positions of responsibility and trust. And one of the remarkable um, responsibility na nakuha niya, of course, is magiging role, ang kanyang role ay magiging translators of the King James Bible. Then he walked with royalty 
Okay, as chaplain to King James the First. So he was a chaplain to King James the First. Yung isa kanina, chaplain to Queen Elizabeth. Now ito ay chaplain ng... So that's why, no wonder, they were the king's choice. Because they were the best in their times po mga kapatid. And he had been a student at Cambridge when Edward Lively is one of the translators, which is we're going to talk about also that decorated life of Edward Lively. And at this time, Edward Lively was prominent Hebraist of his time po mga kapatid and held that religious professorship in Hebrew and likely po mga kapatid, King or uh, Geoffrey King was taught and mentored by Love Lively and his appointment as religious professor in 1607 demonstrate that confidence of the king and the fellow translators had in his scholarly abilities particularly his knowledge of Hebrew, the language of the Old Testament. So, understandable po mga kapatid. That's why kaya nga napili. Ang point po dito, wala pong mapili. Amen. Hindi po sila mapili. Not until po mga kapatid, they are, not, they are well known of this craft. But above all, they have to be saved. They have to be Christian. They have to be a minister. That's why makakita po natin, not only they are professors, not only their 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 teachers, but their pastors and their chaplains. Po mga kapatid. Some of them are missionaries. Amen. Evangelists. Po mga kapatid, na may kita po natin. And si Richard Thompson po mga kapatid. Si Richard Thompson. Another decorated ano po mga kapatid, part of this First Westminster Company. And he is called as a philologer. He is a philologist po mga kapatid. When we talk about philologist, he is an expert in languages and literature. So ito yung craft niya. Mastered root words in many languages. So pag sinasabi mo mga kapatid ng mga etymology, studies of root words, he is good at this. This was his craft po mga kapatid. So kumbaga parang sa military at sa army pa, itong King James Translator ay iba-iba ang kanilang mga measures. Iba-iba ang kanilang mga abilities and expertise. And this Richard Thompson is good at this. Amen. Remember, ang kanilang access the time na common pa ang pag-aaral po ng iba-ibang language. But he is not just a student of that, but he mastered and he's teaching those things and those craft po mga kabadid. And thereby extended his fame to France, Italy, and Germany. And Richard Thompson also brought to his company a broad knowledge of available books and manuscript materials as well as proficiency in Hebrew, Greek, and Latin. So he's good at Hebrew, Greek, and Latin. When we, when we talk about proficiency po, mga kapatid, that means he could write very well, he could speak very well, and he could uh, understand very well. Ito pong Hebrew, Greek, and Latin po mga kapatid. So it was reported that he was a ripe scholar, philologist, and critic. And that among his friends were the famed European scholar of Casabon, Grotius, and Scaliger. In fact, he was better known for his scholarship in Italy, France, Germany, than in England. So of course, Famous po siya po mga kapatid to the point na although hindi man siya ganun sa England, pero sa France, Germany, Italy. So that made him so famous po mga kapatid in his time that appointed, that, uh, uh, nagiging kaparte po sila dito sa project ng translation ng King James Bible po mga kapatid. Over 200 years after his death, ito ay, it, over after, 200 years after sa kanyang death, it was noted that Richard Thompson was among those who were remembered okay in 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 the universities of cambridge he was remembered for their profound knowledge of divinity pag sinabi mong profound knowledge of divinity this is not just knowledge about secular knowledge but knowledge of the word of god knowledge about god and knowledge about his word and sabi niya, and still quoted at Cambridge. This is, this is the translators na ginamit ng mga 
ng Panginoon. And again, they're outstanding in their ability when it comes to their translation and as a translator, but their spirituality also is outstanding po mga kapatid. Makikita po natin. And this would be last but not the least na pag-usapan muna natin this morning because our time will not allow us. And this is a, a translator by the name of William Bedwell. So of course, another another ano po ng first company po mga kapatid ng Westminster, another translator, another decorated translator. And William Bedwell became one of the foremost Arabist or Orientalist in Europe. So and gained the title the father of arabic studies in england so he is also yung mga semitic language is good at that not just in language but their culture also they studied doon po sa oriental or sa middle east and as they know po mga kapatid so father of arabic studies in england so he's well known of this mukhang arabo din nga naman si william bedwell but hindi siya arabo english yan and Bedwell was a pioneer in Arabic studies and became known as the foremost Arabist in England. So yung, siya yung pinakauna, which this skill he was called upon to act as a translator of official documents as an interpreter. When a Moroccan party arrived in England to visit Queen Elizabeth I, it was William Bedwell who met them first. Of course, he could relate and he could uh, understand them. So as an Orientalist, Bedwell brought to the work of translating the first 12 books of the Bible, okay, of the Old Testament, and provide that contextual understanding of the setting for the story. Kasi you know, you know, ang ano po ang Old Testament most specially, uh, we talk about Philistines, we talk about, hello, Egypt, we talk about and uh, Israel, we talk about Syria, talk about and dami pong neighboring countries ng ano po mga kapatid. So it's more of, presently, it's more of Arabic, ano po mga kapatid, land po mga kapatid in that area. So the nomadic tribe and tribal lifestyle of many of the biblical characters was in many ways similar to those people and cultures studied by Bedwell. So that's why ang expertise niya na yun, ay nagamit para sa translation work na ito. Lalo na sa mga customs and cultures po, mga kabatid. Kanina, yung expertise ng agriculture, ay agriculture, architecture po, mga kabatid, is used also on that measurements ng temple and also ng tabernacle po, mga kabatid. So, this perspective, in addition to his great understanding of Arabic and Semitic languages, made Bedwell, look at this, a significant contributor to the translation. Amen. So he became a significant contributor. And it could, he could be ano po, referred every time and very ti- uh, timely sa kanilang project ng Genesis to Second Kings. And much of that sa, language, uh, sa culture na kanya napag-aralan. And he published a book entitled A Discovery of Impostures of Muhammad or Muhammad and the Quran. So ibig sabihin ito naman ay anti-Islam naman to. Si William Bedwell. So you, do you see that mga kabadet? And he wrote that book and when you write that <laughs> sa mga panahon po na yan nako po. But uh, yun po ang mga yun po ito mga um, articles, materials ibig sabihin he was against the Quran and he was an advocate ng word of God po mga kapatid ng Bible and even against kay Muhammad. And also, he continued his love and study of practical mathematics. Is This is another mathematician. He is not just a linguist. He is also a mathematician throughout his life. And he wrote and popularized that carpenter's rule. Di ko alam kung ginagamit ba natin dito sa mga karpintero dito sa, dito sa Pilipinas. But he wrote that uh, ano po, carpenter's rule in measuring. This, war, this was part of his effort to make theoretical writings in arithmetic, geometry, and measuring accessible in a practical way to those tradesmen who lack formal university education. 
Alam nyo po, yung mga karpintero, ang galing magtansya yan. Ang galing magkwenta yan. Of course, if you observe yung mga carpenter, lately po mga kapatid, may pinapagawa kami dito sa bahay, ay talagang ang galing nila magtingin kung balance ba o hindi, kung kulang ba o hindi, yung mag-measure ay doon po sila. Although wala naman silang wala naman silang ano formal na education patungkol po doon, but they learn it by experience, they learn it siguro with this anong tawag nito carpenter's rule. I don't know po mga kapatid. Amen. But they're good at arithmetic, geometry, and even that measuring po mga kapatid. Pag ipakwentahin mo, sabi, sabi ko dati ka inyo, pakicalculate naman kung ilang tiles ang kailangan, ilang plywood ang kailangan, ilang ganitong kailangan. So ah, talaga, ang tira lang dito sa, sa buong bahay ay dalawang piraso. So ibig ko sabihin na very tinitingnan pa lang nila. Alam na eh. Kung ano yung measurement po mga kapatid. So ito ito po si William Bedwell he is also a mathematician mga kapatid. And as a mathematician he invented that geometrical Bedwell's rule. Tawag niya ay Bedwell's rule. Maybe that's the carpenter's rule po mga kapatid. So this eminent oriental scholar published an edition of the Gospel of John in Arabic. So he he, he published that ano po, uh, edition in the Gospel of John in Arabic and in Latin. He also wrote, listen, take note on this. He wrote a three-volume Arabic lexicon and a Persian dictionary. Amen. What well, a blessing po mga kapatid. Magsulat ka ng dictionary po mga kapatid. Ng Arabic at saka Persian, you must be somebody. Amen. And unlike the higher critics po, Bedwell believed The Bible was the Word of God. Ito yung pinaka-prominent para sa akin sa kanila. As a translator, he believed the Bible, the Word of God. He was also discerning enough to identify the secular and the pagan elements in these neighboring languages. So alam na alam po niya po mga kapatid. And his epitaph mentioned po mga kapatid, epitaph mentioned that he was for the eastern tongues as learned men as most live in those modern times yun yung pagka pagkasabi the eastern tongue as the learned men sa mga eastern tongues a learned man he was known of that as a learned man as most live in these modern times could you imagine that makikita mo sa kanyang kung saan siya inilibing sa kanyang epitaph po mga kapatid as a learned man as most live in this modern times so this was uh, william bedwell and ang kanyang friend na si isaac cowsbon sum up the character of william bedwell sabi niya this multifaceted and enormously talented man he was multifaceted so alangan christian pa translator pa theologian pa, mathematician pa. Amen. And of course, godly. Truth, this is a multifaceted, enormously talent, talented man po mga kapatid. That's William Bedwell. So I'll stop there po mga kapatid and uh, maybe we'll, we'll talk about uh, more of that. Marami pa tayo mga decorated na mga ano po. We're just talking of one company. And hindi pa nga natin natapos po mga kapatid. Pero ang dami pa niyan as, as we, we can know and we can see. And, uh, and uh, sana po mga kapatid, hindi tayo magsawa although masyadong history, masyadong dry po ito. But this is a very important note and important information because this would validate ng ating mga ang, ang ang men behind dito ay hindi pipitsugin kagaya ng mga kagaya po ng mga critic po mga kapatid kagaya ng mga self proclaim na mga mga Hebrew Greek scholars right now kung i-compare mo sila wala lang sila sa katiting po mga kapatid and they they started to criticize the translation work of the King James translators when in fact po mga kapatid wala lang sila sa katiting pagdating po sa knowledge pagdating po sa sa accomplishment, pagdating po sa qualification. And these people, these men, I don't think na mauulit itong kind of generation po na ito. For me, they are unrivaled. 
They are unparalleled when it comes to their craft po, mga kapatid. And so much of that uh, self-proclaimed scholars in our modern times, but they've never been, not even a bit of this, ano, and much more, hindi lang sa talent, hindi lang sa kanilang abilities, but even sa spirituality po, mga kapatid. Above, above all, the most outstanding in all these things is their walk with God, their relationship with God, which is wala ka pong makikita ng ganun. And saan, saan ba ang mga buhay, saan bang ba account ng mga modern translators po mga kapatid? Tinago. Dahil nakakahiya yung iba po mga kapatid. Pero lahat ng account po ng even ng King James translators natin, we have that. Why we can access that to history? Because they are not just ordinary men in their generation. They are also men who contributed much in their generations that's why po mga kapatid history has a record of their lives thinking that that was a 500 400 years na, na nakalipas po mga around more than 400 years na nakalipas and we can still have a copy and a full biography of their of their life po mga kapatid hindi po ganun nang you know so kilala sila alam ng tao kung sino sila po mga kapatid. So sana po ay marami pa tayo. We, you still have about to hear the life of John Reynolds. We you still yet to hear about the life of John Boyce. And napakaganda. You you'll still hear the life of William Ward. Ay, ang dami po pa mga kapatid na uh, makikita po natin na magaganda po mga kapatid. So will patiently by and by know these things and uh na such kaya ganun na lang ang prutas ganun na lang kaganda yung language and beauty ganun na lang ka ka majestic itong itong bible natin at hindi naluluma kahit ilan na ang improvement ng language ito pa rin ang standard bearer pa rin Itong Elizabethan language, itong Shakespearean language na ito, ganun pa rin po mga kapatid na makikita po natin. And napaka sarap mo basahin. And no wonder, not only of the, of the translators' exceptional abilities, but even in their holy lives and their godly walk po mga kapatid. Ito po ang, ang nakikita po natin dito. And thank God, thank God for 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 this and i hope po mga kapatid you'll still join me next monday and sa pag-aaral po even sa mga buhay pa ng mga king james translators po na ito and thank you for joining us thank you for uh thank you for listening with us this morning and thank god sa mga lessons nating na natutunan i th- still going back to that text for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man but by holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. In spite of that exceptional ability, but God's superintendence, amen, God's intervention and providence was still upon these men. And I could read to you their excerpts that it was God who gave them light. It was God. That, that was their claim. Amen. In spite dito po sa kanilang mga accomplishment. And thank God. Thank God for that. Amen. Never they never brag about that. They never brag about that, but but they were faithful men of God. They they they're believers of the word of God and they have the fear of God in their lives and very evident sa kanila pong buhay. And thank you for listening once again and and let's go to the Lord in prayer. Thank you Lord sa pag uh, allow nyo sa amin na makilala itong mga men behind our King James Bible. Thank you for using their lives, Lord, not only of their exceptional ability, but the example of godliness and example of holiness and faithfulness to you. Thank you also even for their ministries, Panginoon, not only of translating the Bible, but they are also ministers of God. They are pastors, they are preachers, they are evangelists. And thank you for, for using these holy men of God para magkaroon kami ng pure English Bibles sa aming mga kamay. Now bless it, Lord, and help us to be encouraged also sa kanila mga buhay, and to be to also be uh, to be inspired, Panginoon. Na in spite kung sino sila sa kanila accomplishment, Panginoon, 
hindi po sila nagbago sa kanilang walk sa inyo. And sana ganun lang din ang mangyayari po sa amin, Panginoon. At tulungan nyo kami that we could also contribute in our generation, in our own little way, Panginoon. We may not be known in history just like them, but in our own little way, Panginoon, we could also impart kung ano yung ipapagawa nyo sa amin. And help us to yield just like they yielded to you, Panginoon. And bless the hearers right now, the saints na kasama namin. Bless this lesson, Panginoon, as we continue next week sa lesson na ito. And this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening. Thank you everyone sa mga nakikinig po. Amen. Amen. And